this rumor. And here's Adam Longo. Our Verify team exists to keep fake news from spreading around online. So young people from around the world organized climate change protests on Friday, and those continue today in D.C. So now folks are circulating a photo online claiming that protesters left heaps of trash like this. So we're verifying, does this photo actually show litter from environmental protests? All right, so our researchers used Google's reverse image search and found that this photo is actually miscaptioned. This picture was taken at Hyde Park in London. That's according to the Royal Parks. That's a charity in charge of London's parks. They say the photo was taken after an unofficial event that happened back in April. Now, originally, people blamed an environmental group called Extinction Rebellion. They're the same people that blocked D.C. traffic today with a yellow and pink boat. Both Royal Parks, though, and the group themselves confirmed in April Extinction Rebellion did not leave the litter, but they did help to clean it up. Apparently, there was a 420 gathering, which historically leaves the park a mess. So we can't verify. Nope, this photo is completely miscaptioned. Listen, if you've got something that you want verified, reach out to me directly. You see something that's trash online, we'll clean it up for you. Find me on Facebook and Twitter at Adam Longo TV or email the team, verify at WSA9.com. The Late Show with Stephen Colbert is all new, and we're pretty tight with his crew, so we got a bit of a sneak peek of tonight's show. Tonight, will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Then, all the lonely people, where do they all come from? <laughs> Plus, why don't we do it in the road? All that and Paul McCartney with traffic and weather are on the ones tonight. All right, The Late Show is on right after us, but we are not done yet. Topper is here. You are monitoring the tropics, which aren't going to do very much to us. But when you say Puerto Rico or something like that, you really get our attention. Yeah, now it's going to be a, not a big storm for Puerto Rico, but they don't need anything. They don't need anything. They don't need, they don't need anything. The mm -hmm. biggest threat actually is going to be four to six inches of rain there. But a couple of these right now are not going to cause any problems. But some of these, like Karen, we're going to track for days, and it, it may actually be a problem for the, for the southeastern U.S. Okay, so Karen's still a tropical depression. Tropical storm warnings still are in effect for San Juan and the Virgin Islands. It's going to move across the island uh, tonight. So winds could uh, gust to over 40 miles per hour. The uh, hurricane center is making it a tropical storm overnight into early tomorrow morning. Then it moves northward. You're thinking no problem. Okay, then it begins to move back to the north and the west, and then it begins to move actually west-southwest. So now it's got our attention. Now it's a high-end tropical storm. This is Saturday night about 9 o'clock. Winds are 65 miles per hour. So here are the uh, spaghetti plots on this. Again, each line is a computer model. Again, you don't think we're going to worry about it, but then it starts to turn, and some of the models take it right back toward the southeast coast. So we're going to be talking about Karen for the next probably week or so. In the meantime, uh, Tropical Storm Jerry, high-end storm, 65 miles per hour, is going to move north and then turn northeastward and head toward Bermuda. Just give them a glancing blow, not as strong as what happened to them last week with Umberto, but still two storms within a week is still kind of crazy. And then we have Lorenzo, and this is a high-end tropical storm that will become a hurricane. The good news with this storm, this probably will stay harmlessly out in the Atlantic, but not before it becomes a Category 3, also by Saturday with winds 115 miles per hour. So it's Karen we're going to focus on. And there's more on our website and our app about this. All right, the, uh, for the radar last hour had some showers going through parts of uh, Prince George's County and Arundel County. Everything is now essentially, essentially into Calvert County. So uh, up by the stadium, all the showers have passed through. And they ran into some really dry air today, so they didn't really amount to much. All right, tomorrow, this is going to be a great, great first full day of fall. I mean, it really is. It's going to be very crisp. 60s to start in the morning. That's downtown temp. Low 70s by 9 o'clock. Only upper 70s by lunchtime. And only 81 as the kids head home. And that's going to be a dry 81. Really a nice, refreshing day. So it's going to be a little warmer than average, but not like our 94 today. Yeah, Dulles set a record high at 94. We had our 59th 90 degree day. So low 80s tomorrow and Wednesday, mid 80s on Thursday and Friday, and then upper 80s on Saturday. Probably go 90 if we didn't think we'd have so many showers and storms. So just a terrific Tuesday, breezy and cooler. And even though it's going to be warm, it's still going to be nice, uh, you know, Wednesday through Friday with temps in the 80s. And again, a chance for showers and storms over the weekend. So early in the morning, 60s maybe 70 downtown by nine o'clock 60s maybe 71 dc but then by one o'clock lunchtime gorgeous 78 downtown 70